Hello, hello, pumpkin pies. This is a very old, old book. This belonged to your great, great grandmother. And she was a teacher. Her name was Irma. And she was very beautiful, almost as pretty as your grandma. And ah, she has Grandma Thomas. And so there are two books. And these came out, I think they were published in the 30s or the 40s. They were originally published in uh, the Evening News of Newark, New Jersey. And these are beautiful stories. You're going to love these. So tonight, I thought we'd read the first story in Uncle Wiggly's Fortune. And this is about Uncle Wiggly and the Fox. Are you ready? You might want to cuddle up. It's kind of a long story, uh, not too long. Maybe we'll read a couple, but cuddle up, get some apples, cheese, and milk, a healthy little snack, and let's settle in for a story. This one doesn't have very many pictures, but when it does have pictures, I'll be sure to show them. So you're going to have to imagine the pictures in your head, okay? Okay, you ready? Once upon a time, not so many years ago, there lived an old gentleman rabbit named Uncle Wiggly Longears. He was a nice, quiet sort of a bunny, and he had lots of friends, among other rabbits and squirrels and ducks and doggies and pussycats and mice and lambs and all sorts of animals. Most especially, there was a muskrat lady named Miss Jane Fuzzy Wuzzy who liked Uncle Wiggly very much. She made a crutch for him when he had the rheumatism. She gnawed it out of a cornstalk for him and painted it red, white, and blue with raspberry jam. Well, Uncle Wiggly was a funny old rabbit gentleman. He was always having adventures, which means whatever happens to you, such as stubbing your toe or getting lost or things like that. I have told you some of Uncle Wiggily's adventures in a book before this, and also about how he traveled all around looking for his fortune so he would become rich. But he didn't find his fortune for some time, though many things happened to him. Well, Uncle Wiggily used to sleep in the hollow stump, and one night it rained so hard that he had to go to bed and pull the dried leaves up over him to keep warm. All night long it rained, and in the morning, Uncle Wiggily got up. He was hoping the weather had cleared so he could travel on and seek his fortune and get rich. Out of bed hopped Uncle Wiggily. In one corner of the stump was his valise, in which he carried his lunch and his clean clothes. Do you know what a valise is? It's like a briefcase, kind of like a suitcase, only smaller. Well, the day before, a bad wolf had chased Uncle Wiggily, almost catching him and tearing his coat, so that now the old rabbit gentleman was quite stiff and sore. Still, he managed to hop about. Oh, dear me, Uncle Wiggily exclaimed as he looked out of a hole in the stump and saw the big raindrop still pattering down. Oh, this is a very poor day for me to find my fortune. Still, I can't stay in on account of the weather, so I will get my breakfast and travel on to seek my fortune. He had some carrot and lettuce sandwiches in his valise, and he ate these and then looked out to see if the rain had stopped, but it had not, I'm sorry to say. Well, Uncle Wiggily said, I don't like to get wet, but there's no help for it. I'll start out. Then he happened to think of something. I know what I'll do, he exclaimed. I'll pick the largest toadstool I can find and I'll use it for an umbrella. Out he ran and soon he had picked a big toadstool that made as fine as an umbrella as one could wish. And then strapping his satchel to his back where it would be out of the way, the old gentleman rabbit hopped off, holding the toadstool umbrella over his head and limping along on his barber pole crutch. And as he hopped over the meadows and through the woods, he sang this little song. And sometimes when one sings it just at the right time, why the rain stops almost at once. But the song must be sung at the proper time. Anyhow, this is the song. Splish, splash, drip, dash, how the raindrops fall. When the weather gets too wet, it isn't nice at all. 
Mr. Rain, oh, please go away, for my feet are wet. And you're splashing on my nose. What? You can't stop yet? Won't you please be nice to me? Make your raindrops dry. I'm sure you could do this if only you would try. Dry raindrops are very nice, and if they would fall, we would walk in showers and not get wet at all. Well, as soon as Uncle Wiggily had sung this song, he looked up quickly from under his toadstool umbrella to see if it had stopped raining, but it happened, or it hadn't, and splash, a drop fell right in his, oh, in his left eye, which made Uncle Wiggily sneeze so hard that his spectacles fell off. ha -choo! That's really hard. And they dropped right into the mud puddle. Ha hum, exclaimed the old gentleman rabbit. This is a pretty kettle of fish. Of course, he didn't mean that there was a kettle of fish in the mud puddle, but it was his manner of talking because he was so surprised. Ah, a very pretty kettle of fish indeed, cried the old gentleman rabbit. And speaking of fish, I guess I'll have to fish for my spectacles. So what did he do but use his red, white, and blue striped barber pole crutch for a fishing pole? He dipped it down in the mud puddle and in a little while came up with his glasses wiggling on the end of his crutch, just like an eel. Ah, oh, that is good luck, said the rabbit gentleman as he wiped off the mud and water and put on his spectacles. He was just going out to, or going to put his toadstool umbrella over his head again when he saw that the rain indeed had stopped and he didn't need it. Then he left the toadstool hanging on a berry bush by the mud puddle to dry so that whoever came along the next time would have an umbrella all ready for the rain. Well, now that the sun is coming out, I must be on the watch for my fortune, said the old gentleman rabbit to himself. He peered first on one side of the road and then on the other, but not a sign of his fortune could he see. And then all of a sudden he saw something shining gold and yellow in the field close by. Oh, oh, that must be a pile of yellow gold, exclaimed Uncle Wiggily. Oh, now my fortune is made. And he hopped over to the field. But alas, in a lack of day, instead of being gold, the pile of yellow things that he saw were carrots. <laughs> well, it might be worse, said the rabbit. At least I can eat carrots, but I wonder if whoever they belong to would mind if I took some. I wouldn't mind a bit, exclaimed a voice. Take as many as you like, Uncle Wiggily. And up jumped Mr. Groundhog, who owned the carrots. Take all you can eat and fill your valise, said Mr. Groundhog. Oh, thank you kindly, replied the rabbit. So he ate several carrots and filled his satchel with more. And then he and Mr. Groundhog talked about weather and things like that until it was time for Uncle Wiggily to hop on again after his fortune. But he didn't find it. And pretty soon it came on toward night and the old gentleman rabbit looked for a place to stay while it was dark. <sighs> well, I think this will do, he said, when he reached a small stone cave. I'll just crawl in here with my carrots and my crutch and in he crawled as nicely as a basket of shavings. Pretty soon, Uncle Wiggily was fast, fast asleep. And he never thought the least might about any danger, but danger was close at hand just the same. Oh, hark! What's that creeping, creeping along under the bushes? Huh? What's that? What? Why, my goodness sakes, alive and a piece of pie? It's the old fuzzy fox. Oh, yes, as true as I'm telling you, that old red fox had seen Uncle Wiggily go into the cave and now he was snooping and snipping up to catch the rabbit gentleman if he could. Oh, I'll soon have a fine time, said the fox in a whisper, smacking his lips into the cave. And in the darkness, he happened to knock over Uncle Wiggily's crutch, which was standing in a corner. Quickly, the old gentleman rabbit awakened when he heard the noise. Up he jumped and he cried out, Who's there? I'm the fox, was the answer, and I came to catch you. <gasps> but 
Do you suppose Uncle Wiggily was afraid? Shh, not a bit of it. He ran to his valise and took out a paw full of carrots with their sharp points. And before that fox could even sneeze, the rabbit threw one carrot at him and hit him right on the nose. For Uncle Wiggily could see in the dark. Do you know why he could see in the dark? Carrots have lots of vitamin A. True. Then he threw another carrot and hit the fox on the ear. And then he threw another one and hit him on the two eyes. And that fox was so frightened and so surprised that he jumped out of the second story window of the cave house and sprained his toenail. Then he ran back to his den and he didn't bother Uncle Wiggily anymore that night. And the rabbit slept in peace and quietness and dreamed all about Santa Claus and ice cream popcorn balls. But... Uncle Wiggily had another adventure the next day. I'll tell you about it in a little while. When if someone sends me a mud pie with a cherry on top, the story will be about Uncle Wiggily and the bird's nest. Well, what did you think of that? That was pretty darn exciting, wasn't it? Hmm. I guess you know now you should eat your carrots because then you can see in the dark and that will help you at night. Bye.